I just made a mistake. Howdy doody dangly folks, I uh, hope you're doing well. Welcome to today's video and we are today making homemade beef jerky. Jerky just seems to be something that's just got really popular in the last few years here. Yeah, I think it's mainly more American thing and then it started to pop up in supermarkets just as a snack and now they're everywhere and you can get chicken jerky, alligator jerky, all the jerky you could ever want a jerky in. I've got to be honest with you, I actually prefer biltong, but I don't really know what I'm doing. This is my first time doing this and biltong you tend to leave out to dry for about 20 odd days and I really want to do that. But let's do jerky because I've got some things that can help do that. In fact, the day we are filming this right now is Sunday. We need to rewind 24 hours to yesterday, Saturday with Chloe. Huh? Hello, how much do you love beef jerky? I love it. We ate it by accident, didn't we? Yeah. What do you like about it? Because she likes pepperami and real tangy stuff. I don't know why. It's just a, it's just a natural habit. Natural habit. Brilliant. <laughs> so we're going to try and make it, okay, two different ways. <laughs> one is going to need actual beef steak, okay, so the, the proper stuff. And, and one's going to need magic. Yes, or beef mince. This is some 5% fat beef mince, all right? So I put it in there so you don't have to touch it right now. You will in a minute. Pour in a little dribble of soy sauce, or about a tablespoon. So we'll go that. This is Worcester sauce, okay? Da, 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 da. I'll do this, mate, because this is liquid smoke. You just need a teeny bit of that, and it's optional. This just gives it a smoky flavour. It replicates if it was like out in a smoker, but in the oven. Mm. Oh, <laughs> together. Is that horrible? Oh. You're not gonna do salt bay? Okay, you're doing Chloe bay. Brilliant. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Some curry powder. So mm. give it a little shake together. Do, do, do. About that amount. Ooh, yes. Why do we need curry powder? Well, we're just adding loads of flavourings and spices, mate. You can mix it up any way you want. What would you put in there? Um, pineapple. Pineapple, brilliant. This is some ginger. Can I try? Yeah, good. Mm. Do, do, do. This is some coriander that's ground, not the seeds. This is some garlic powder. All right, not too much. Wow. We're going to have some garlicky jerky. Onion granules. Pepper. Now I'm going overboard on this, okay, because. Oh. What? Do you not oh, like it? it's too strong. Oh, you love it when it all comes together, mate. Because remember, there's a lot of meat in there. That's a kilo of beef mince. Now, I'm adding extra pepper because we would also add some lemon pepper. And I couldn't find that in the shop this morning, but apparently by adding some lemon zest, which is what you've got there. Yes, mate, you're doing it. Daddy, I've watched loads of lemon zest in on television. I know, but it's sharp, mate. You be careful. Good work though. I don't really want to be so professional like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> you don't want to be so professional, you just want to be semi-professional. How does that look? That look cool? Mm, yeah. Now this is where it's going to get a bit messy, all right? I need you to get your hands in there and scrunch it all together. You're going to hate this. In one big bowl? Yeah, just mix it all so all the flavours and spices go all together. Oh. Is that fun? <laughs> That's so weird. Oh. Notice how Chloe's doing this because Phoebe is a vegetarian. Well, she does like chicken nuggets. <laughs> Hello, it's Barry. Hope you're well and enjoying this video. This is just a quick reminder to let you know I'm currently running a crowdfunding campaign to support the next range of gadgets and I'm shipping them worldwide and even signing some of them. So if you haven't checked it out, check the link in the video or there should be a card in the video too. Enjoy the rest of this video and stay stonking. Okay, do make sure that it's all well mixed together. I just have to get in there as well because some of the spices and herbs will just stay in one batch and they need to sort of mingle and get friends with other people, don't they? Just like joining a new yes. school. Right, folks? Yes. Here is a silpat, aka like a non slip mat. You can use um, a baking parchment as well if you want. It's just where we're going to make the jerky. This might look a bit strange. What is this, Chloe? The jerky gun! Yes, it is a jerky gun. Yeah. Effectively, someone has just taken a silicon gun and turned it into a nozzle for, uh, well, a thing for uh, putting beef jerky on. You see, it comes with two nozzles. You've got a round one or a flat one. This is what we're going to use. It's going to fit though. No, we're not going to get all the mix in there, but enough. So we've got a kilo of that mince. Probably Ooh. about a third, 300 grams will fit. Then you stick this bit on. I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, especially if you've ever silicon yeah. stuff. Um, level it up. So we should start to see jerky come out of this in a minute. Yeah, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and then we lay it down like that. Yes, 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 yes. There we go, that'll do. That's a strip. That is your first ever jerky strip. Why do we need to make them in strips? Because that's how you eat them, remember? That gets the right thickness on it, because if it's too thick, 
it won't be very nice. Go on, man. <laughs> you look like a really confused Ghostbuster. Keep pumping it. Wow. Awesome. And then we'll just pull it I away. You're going to fall off. Right, let's just go. Right, okay. We will slice it with a knife. No, you just made jerky strips. Want to do another one? All oh, right, that's worked out quite well. So that is just from 300 grams of the meat. Now, if you haven't got a jerky gun and want to invest in one, I can't remember how much that was, but I saw it, I'm like, I have to get that. And you saw how easy that is. The alternative is to get some baking parchment, uh, two sheets of it, one on top, uh, one underneath, and the meat between, and roll it out nice and thin. About, I'd say it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Chloe has now got to go to a party and a sleepover. So what's gonna happen is I'll work on the other bits and we'll leave it overnight to marinade. And then tomorrow we'll get it going so that you can have some, I don't know, when you come home, I guess. All right, so they are in the fridge now. That was actually almost all of the meat day, so you get quite a lot of strips out of it. Now we do a different method with another bowl, marinade. This recipe is gonna be a wet marinade rather than a dry rub, so rather than working it into the meat, it's gonna soak in there. So we need a bit more extra fluid. This is some soy sauce, this is the low salt stuff, and some Worcester sauce. So again, what we used earlier, but just a lot more. Now the only extra things I'm gonna do is add a little bit of paprika, I love paprika. And just because it won't ooze out when we're drying it, but it's gonna go into the marinade, a little squirt of honey. But then I'm doing the same, so I'm going from a lemon zest, pepper, unnecessary salt bay, a few drops of liquid smoke, not too much, the ginger, the curry powder, onion granules, the garlic granules, <laughs> and some ground coriander. So very similar in there, really. Just the only thing that's added extra is the paprika and the honey. But the cool thing is you can mix this up, uh, no pun intended. Well, I'm actually whisking, aren't I, rather than mixing. Any way you want. Make it sweeter, make it spicier, stronger, more herby. Any way you like, yeah, just go for it. Now, just to make that a bit easier to pour, I'm gonna get it into a jug. This, ladies and gents, is some beef skirt. Now, I believe you can use lots of different types of meat for jerky. Some of them give you different consistencies, but you want to try and get it quite thin. So last night, I bashed this a little bit, and then I've stuck it in the freezer for about an hour to firm it up to make slicing it a bit easier. Now, you see these lines running down the steak? That's what's known as the grain, and it's not just in beef either. It's in chicken and things like that too. Now, what I didn't realise, right, this is genuinely true. The other day, I cooked a steak, and I read that the way you slice it, if you slice it down the grain, or across the grain, it can actually affect how tender the meat is. So if you can imagine, if we slice with the grain, all of these fibers are strong and they're staying together. So when you actually bite into your jerky later, it'll be a lot more of a tougher, you know, stronger jerky. So if you cut across the grain, and that's for when you're making jerky and also generally when you're having your steak, if you cut across it, you're breaking up those fibers into smaller strands sectioned together. So it should be more tender. So think about that next time you make a steak, all right? But I bash this to, you know, roughly the same thickness. See, if I'm going with the grain like that, you see all these strong fibers together. I might actually put that piece in just as a comparison. We'll have two bits with it running with the grain. So this bit here, going against the grain, trying to get it a rough same thickness as our jerky gun. So the initial slice is quite hard to get through because you're cutting through so many fibers, but you're getting a good old piece there. So you see the difference now? We've got the fibers with the grain running down like that, and these right across, loads of little bands. These are about a quarter of an inch thick. If they're any thicker than that, you can just get your rolling pin again and flatten them. Another option you could do is actually dunk the whole steak in the marinade, let it marinade, and then do this bit. I just thought this might be less messy, but this is my first time doing this. Long story short, I just went to marinate it, looked at it, thought, no, they are way too thick compared to the ones in the fridge. So I had the painstaking job of slicing horizontally through the strips. It's good because I've got loads more now, but they're much thinner, which is gonna be super important when we dry it out, otherwise it won't work. If it's too thick, meh. I've just put all that beef into a Ziploc bag, although you could use a bowl. We haven't got much space in the fridge, so I'm using this. Do, do, do. Oh my gosh. Awesome. And now I'm gonna leave this in the fridge with the other bits to marinate overnight. Welcome back. I hope you slept well. Uh, yes, Chloe went to a party overnight and Mrs. Barry and Phoebe stayed at Relatives in Glastonbury. So last night, we had a wild Saturday night. I watched a bit of Stranger Things. Um, yeah. Didn't even order a takeaway or let loose. I could have I could have gone crazy, but no, I was looking after my meat. So we've already showed you two different ways to make the jerky. One that I never knew was possible, where you kind of create the strands yourself with the mince, which should 
be more tender and you can drive that flavor in the other with that phenomenal steak marinade combo going on oh my gosh so not only do i want to see the combination of how they compare i also want to try cooking them two different ways one method is getting a baking tray with some foil lined under it to catch any juices and uh, a cooling rack on top. I now know that you can put these in the oven because of the uh, Alton Brown Paprika Chicken video. So that is your oven method, or you could get one of these. Yep, this is a dehydrator. It's a machine that makes things thirsty. It dehydrates things. So it's really popular with a lot of people that like to dehydrate uh, fruits and vegetables. Like, like sometimes you can get those apple slices, like apple crisps. Do it in one of them. You can do loads of stuff in there, including jerky, apparently. Now, I've never used this before, but it would come in awesome uh, when I did the homemade pot noodle video as well. That would have been perfect to like get your chicken like this as well. Oh, and they said chicken leg bis. That's something my nephew says at the moment. Chicken leg bis, something from TikTok. But the thing I do like about this is there's actually loads of layers of this and you can buy more. So it's kind of like a steamer. It's like you can keep adding more and more layers on there, but I'm only gonna need the two trays. So as it's gonna drip quite a bit, the wet one will go on the bottom layer and then we'll stick our second rack with the dried one that we gunned. I get it? Hmm, okay. So this has got three settings. It does 104 Fahrenheit, 131 Fahrenheit or 167 Fahrenheit, which is either 40 degrees C, 55 C or 75 C. Now my oven does not go beneath 50 C, so I can't do the first one anyway. But if you really want to get a really long, slow dehydration on it, like eight, 10 hours on it, that's where you go for the low temperature. I don't really want to leave my oven on that long either. So I'm going to go for one of the higher temperatures in my oven and here to hopefully reduce the cooking dehydration time and perfectly time it give or take an hour, it doesn't matter if it's done, uh, for the girls to be home. I'm preheating my oven to 60C, <laughs> which I think it's gonna probably beep almost immediately. Now someone did tell me when it comes to doing the oven method, a lot of people leave the door ajar, not ajar, actually open. Now I don't really wanna do that because I overslept this morning and haven't walked the dogs yet. Sorry about that guys. And if I'm gonna leave my oven, I want it closed and sealed. Oh, you hear that? That's my 60 degree oven warming up. Brilliant. I'll just open this up. It smells like a Chinese takeaway. I'm draining off the marinade. All right, so all I'm doing is picking up the meat from the bag, letting it drip a little bit and dragging it on top of some kitchen towel just to help it dry a little extra. This is a really fun task. All right, I've been passing it back and forth about four different pieces of kitchen towel, even patted dried the top as well. Pat! Pat! EastEnders joke, sorry. UK reference. So you can see what we were talking about yesterday with the cuts against the grain. That just looks like quite tender already that it could like tear apart easily. But I think I've fished out the two more butch ones where we've gone with the grain and can you see it just looks stronger and like tougher and more angry. So I'm gonna place some of these strips and again, a bit like the paprika chicken, I guess we might be using a baking rack because the actual squares on it are narrower than a, a standard wire rack anyway. We don't want it falling through. And then I'm gonna put one piece of the tough stuff there. This is so weird, but fun. I'm really enjoying this. A lot of people can get really, really, look, there's our rough one, really into the uh, whole jerky making process. In fact, I just checked my Twitter and a lot of you are much more passionate about Biltong. Uh, and don't worry, I will do that. And he really replied to saying one saying, hey, calm down, you jerk. But I thought that might be actually quite rude. Sit this in. Nice. Level two. I just got these out from the fridge. So by putting them in the fridge overnight, kind of like when you make burgers, it will, by chilling it, made it stronger. But it does remind me much more like kebab-like. It is gonna be weaker. We're gonna need to help it. And I probably do need to slice it. Here's the thing. I've just sliced it up. It took a lot longer and it was harder than I thought. So what Chloe did, in fact, this is the very first piece that she piped. That's perfect size, what I'm thinking right there. Do it there. When you're using a jerky gun or if you're rolling it out, slice it before fridging it up just to get it done, that bit out of the way. You can always remold it and shape it. Other than that, let's get it on the trays. There we go. Such a difference between this and that. I love, we're gonna have like two very different jerkies with similar flavors. All right, here we go. So we've got our steaky jerky on the tray and then ready to go on top of it is the mince one, such a difference. In fact, you can see it clearly well there. Plug it in, I've moved my toaster out of the way. I've given it all a wash. Is that it? I think that's it. <laughs> We're dehydrating. Oh, I just need a drink. So if that's going, mate, we'll stick it middle shelf. That is so cold, that oven. Oh my gosh, please work. 
of this is life now for hours. This is going to be making that noise. My oven's going. I'm going to reduce my electricity bill by shutting everything off and taking the dogs for a very long walk. I just made a mistake. I just checked the manual. Of course, I always do that. Uh, you can see it's got the grooves there. As it's, that's how it stacks. Apparently, it's the easy stack system for when you're storing it. Okay, but we want to not rest it on the grooves. There we go. So it's it's got a bit more air going around it. Always read the manual. All right, dogs. I've literally just got in from walking them. I had an extra long walk. I've come back in. I feel like I've stepped into a beef jerky making factory. The smell is phenomenal. All the spices, a little sweetness in the air. Oh, a bit longer to go, but yeah. Apart from the noise, it's a bit annoying. Hello, Chloe. Hello. Happy Sunday. Did you have a good stay? Yeah. Uh, you're now off to another party. Is yeah. this right? Okay. Yeah. You're partied out. I love the leather jacket though. That's very trendy. You said I look like Michael Jackson. I did, yeah. Hit <laughs> right, Mrs. B? Hello. Nice little stay away? Yes, thank you. Don't worry about me, I was fine. Good. So I'm going to switch this off. Oof. And the oven is coming off too. Now, because this oven isn't very warm, I can almost, I'm not going to do it, but I could pretty much pull that out straight away. It's so cool. I was like, is anything happening? The really cool thing I found with homemade jerky is that you can make it as rock hard as you want. There's some brands that I've bought where it's like literally eating card and some people like it like that, but you can take it a little less and get it a slightly bit more chewier. Big fish, little fish, cardboard box. Which I think for little mouths will actually go down a bit tastier, right? Yeah. So you're basically saying that we can't really talk much about Michael Jackson because he's dead. This is the one with the, where we cut it along the grain. It's sort of shriveled up quite a bit, but that is a bit tougher. So I put both the jerkies. There's no difference between the oven or the dehydrator, except the ones with the wet marinade. You can see that like the actual spices are stuck to it. Whereas the ones where you mix them, Chloe, yeah. it's kind of like ground in like a slab. That is actually your one. You want to try it? Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What? I do like um like the ones from the shops. You like the ones in the shops, so do I. But I do prefer these ones. Why? Because yeah. it's more, more chewy. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I did because I could have kept doing it. I think another hour and a half, it would have gone like card. But I don't like it like that. I like it when it's like that. And it's got a little bit. It's completely dried out. There's no real moisture there, but it's it's good. Mm. So try this one. These are the ones that I did with steak that might be even more tender. All right, this is like a meat feast. Ooh. Oh. Oh, mm. Bit tougher. Yeah. Like but I like that. Right. I actually prefer that. It's more fibrous. Is, your, is it stuck in your teeth? <laughs> that is, I prefer that much, much more. That is like sort of nice. Oh. I would actually like is say that that's jerky for kids. Well, I mean, the kid liked it and dogs, they would like that. But this, this has got a bit more bite to it. Well, Don't you think? It does taste like ribs. That's your one. Yeah. If you can do it with steak, yeah. Go and have fun. Are you missing me at all this weekend? Yeah, look, this is that slab. You can see it's a lot tougher. Oh my gosh. Whereas this, it has got more bend in it, which is great. All the little mini fibers stitching it together, holding it, but, oh, firm but fair. Hmm. I don't think this is gonna be that bad though. And I just wonder if it's gonna have a different texture. Oh my gosh, I didn't rip my teeth out. That is a massive difference. I was trying to pull away all of those fibers whereas we've already sliced through them with a knife. That is, that is huge. So in conclusion, steak if you can. I don't think the oven or the dehydrator really made a difference, but what did was cut in against the grain. Get it super tender, play around with it. Let us know how you get on and look out for the follow up video of the homemade biltong. See you soon. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. You could um, play a trick on um, one of your family members and say, oh, I made it not too hot because I know you don't really like... Um
yeah. very hot stuff and then don't put any water by them <gasps> and um that put chilies in it no only make sure they finish their coffee and they say oh no we don't want another coffee <laughs> and then mm, they say oh my god i really need another coffee <laughs> honestly i don't know who she takes after 